<laughs> good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Hello, 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 hello. There's nobody there. I'm talking to myself as per normal. I've got a teenager. I should be used to that. But that's okay. And now I have some people. There we go. Debbie and Marina and Amanda. Welcome back, Amanda. How are you? I'll have to send you a message later because you um, placed an order today, which I'm very grateful for. Thank you very much. Um, at an opportune time, you had a lucky order number come up. You were our lucky particular number. So I'm not going to say what that lucky particular number is out loud because I'll jinx myself. But um, I thought that was really cool. Anyway, welcome back to my last live Facebook for the weekend. This is live Facebook number... A lot. Number a lot. So... Three, three live ones a day. This is number 12 for making something. And number 16, four fours are six. six yeah, four fours are 16. Look at me doing maths. Hello, Michelle, sweetheart. Um, so, yeah, I've had a busy weekend, which is good. And I am loving it. So did you all enjoy my previous one today about talking about tools and those sorts of things or did I bore you to tears and you already know it already what what do you reckon do you don't mind being reminded about some of the cool things that are bloody hell makes, that your life easier. makes your life easier hello Kerry all right so Louise has issued me with a challenge never bored god I love you Michelle Pentland you rock uh, Louise has issued me with a challenge to use, uh, she went and grabbed a heap of scrap effect stuff off the shelf and said, do something with this. And she grabbed this, 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 and this. She grabbed the silhouettes. She grabbed a brick wall stencil. Louise also grabbed the number stencil, the skulls, and the words and she has told me that I have to work in my junk journal. This is going to work really well for the next show when Louise is going to create something live on Facebook. The non-crafter um, and yeah I suspect you're all going to want to show up for that. Just saying. Okay. She can show you how to rap like a boss. absolutely. freaking lootly okay okay Natalie back to being professional um now this afternoon uh, today is scrap effects and chipboard day so 15% online uh for scrap effects products and for yeah um scrap effects products and chipboard, chipboard. so Rebecca says that you're boss you're bossy um Rebecca is just safe to know it's hereditary love it's fine. Um, okay, so this is my Scrap Effects junk journal. No, there will be no purple, Amanda. I draw the line at that. Um, my Scrap Effects junk journal. So junk journals are fantastic. I've been using this one for quite a while now. And what, it, what makes a junk journal are the pages are bought up, with, like are created from numerous bits and pieces. So this one, my almost finished junk journal, is made up of envelopes and die cut pages, tags, music paper. Um, I added this page, this transparency into it. Here's a page with a die cut cut out of it. Um, here's another die cut page, another transparency page. Um, this was a street directory page, I believe. Um, so to give you a bit of an idea going through, here's another little die cut one and this one's in the middle. So I've done a page with that. Uh, I've got a blank one here. So you can see that it's a, a, a binder. And what I love about these junk journals is that they are made up of different substrates. So they are made up of different backgrounds which are going to challenge you. 
Here's the back of the street directory page, transparency. So I just need to put uh, finish this one off and then I'll bind it all together. And I'll just use a, when you buy these kits, you actually get a piece of um, some string in the kit so you can bind it together that way. Um, haven't done anything here. I was cleaning off a palette, obviously. So they're a nice little book and I've just covered the front. Um, how did you cut out on the page one? Okay, so this one here. So Leslie's just asked, how did I do this? Well, Leslie, that's what makes these journals unique. They come like this with these cutouts. So this journal that I'm, uh, this one here is the lace journal. And I've just put a piece of collage paper on the front, as you can see. The one that I'm going to work in today is, this is the limited edition journal. So this one uh, is made up of a manila folder. And what I did is I split open the bottom of the manila folder so that you can see it's a manila folder because it has got that folder bit. Um, then we come into some black paper here, some heavy denim, which scares the crap out of me. We've got music paper. And then this one here, this craft page has got this awesome cutout like that. Um, so that is in the paper. It's got bag, it's got a grid paper, some tag, book paper. I cut out those windows and you'll find the class for that on another um, live Facebook that I've done. So you can see that it's really quite a creative book. And then this one has got this gorgeous... Um, cut out. You can also get ones which are more masculine. There's the construction cut out. There's a couple of really, really good ones as well. So that is what makes these unique. So I'm pulling this apart. I'm going to pop that aside. And today I'm going to use, I've got a bit of craft paper here. And then this is a grid graph paper on that side. Um, so what I have done here um, as a bit of prep work, it, because this is like a super thin paper and you can see it's quite thin and this side is quite thick, I've tried to even it out a bit and prepare the surface by adding some gesso. I also used some uh, washi tape down the middle and sealed it, like joined them together and so that it can become a double page. This was really important to me because I wanted to make sure that um, my pages flowed across each other. Now, Louise has also given me these guys to work with. Uh, and I think I'm going to use that one. Uh, so I'm going to pop her aside. And uh, so these are the silhouettes. So these are actually reasonably new as well. The skull, and I'm going to use this side. So I'm just going to cut this out. Actually, I'm not going to cut it out. I'm going to tear it and give myself a little bit of a plan here on what sort of page I might do. No doubt I'll change my mind. So just a bit of a tip when you are uh, tearing rice paper is use a wet paintbrush and draw around because I want to tear that but I know that I'm not going to get a a nice tear if I do it freehand. So going around like that is going to soften the papers, soften the fibers. And I'm gently going to give that a little more love. Like that. So this is one of the Scrap Effects rice papers, which are super inexpensive. And I'm going to pop that aside because I might use it for something else. And that has torn that off. And I'm just going to leave it that side because I'm going to stick it straight to here. Oh, gee, she's totally challenged me. So if I tear the paper, all paper has a grain to it, which way it tears better Um one it tears better one way than another so if i just tear like that 
it tears beautifully. If I try and tear across here, yeah, if I try and tear the other way, it um, down that way, it might not tear as well because the flow will go the other way. The Dina Wakely collage paper, that's an excellent way of seeing um, how, how paper can tear. I'm going to pop this bit down the bottom over here. Um, and I love that Louise has totally bailed on me now. She's just left the room completely. Unless she's watching this live from inside. Folding up boxes ready for tomorrow's packaging. Tomorrow's packing day. Tomorrow is the day that Louise and I will spend with the music loud in here and packing all of your orders. So you will have until probably 10 p.m. tonight to get the rest of your orders in. And then after that, the sale has finished. Okay, so I want to stick down like that. So as I explained in my previous video and I've chatted with you about before, about it before I'm going to use the gel medium to stick that down um, brush 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 that'll do um, so I've got some gel medium and what I'm going to do is put the gel medium straight down onto the paper first it's not super thick it's just enough And then I'm just going to lightly go over the top. I'm not dipping my brush back into the gel medium. I'm using what's on my brush. Go down there. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's go over this side. Let's go down here. So sometimes when I do these lives, I pull out the product myself and as I'm pulling it off the shelf, I'll have a little bit of a plan on what I want to do. So because I haven't chosen them this time, brain's not quite working the same. All right, so. Uh, so have you all enjoyed the, um, the, the weekend? Have you all had a wonderful weekend? Enjoyed the live Facebooks? Learned something new, reminded yourself of something that you had forgotten, because that happens a lot. That's going to go there. That will go there. I think I'm going to yell at my family in a minute. They've left the, Louise has gone out and left the door open, and I can hear them all inside having a bit of a chat, which no doubt means that you guys can hear every single thing my wonderful family is saying lesson I didn't put that one there before did I but there it is so they're all the layers underneath so where I'm has it where I'm hesitant is I've got this image which is great which is going to go about here and if I put something in the middle here I have to be aware that it's floating so I either need to, and I need to make sure that it is straight as well, because it really, really bugs me when things are all crisscross, higgledy piggledy. Um, so I'm going to, if I put this piece on, for example, it has to be it's totally straight or connected to something. I, I hate when it's not connected to something. Uh, it, it doesn't visually look right. The layers don't fit well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to anchor it about here. So I've got my gel medium down and over the top just to seal it, to make sure it's all stuck down nicely and that it becomes one with the background paper. And then I'm going to, oh gosh, help me. If I do that, then it floats in under the face and I don't want it to float in under the face. I want it to stop about here so that it's not on the face. So see how that's a little bit of pre-planning on what I'm doing there. Uh, 
I might take my paintbrush and just tear off this corner and show you how to blend it into a page rather than me just assuming that you would just stick this down edge to edge at home. So this stops by doing this and making it like a rounded torn edge. It also stops that um, straight line cutting that you can quite often see when you stick down something like this onto a page and where you run the paint up against it, the paint will create a bit of a mark. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna stick that down to my page about there and I need to put my gel medium down first. Now, it's really important that the gel medium isn't super thick. In, in fact, I actually just took some off of my brush. And that works. I don't mind that I've got some overlap down here because it's not a big significant piece of the print. And now I'm just gonna use my brush just to, just to smooth it out and get rid of any bubbles that are underneath. And I'm not putting too much gel medium over the top. I'm just putting enough to make the surface all a similar sort of size. Uh, the medium that Louise has told me I need to use is a gloss sprays, Dina Wakely gloss sprays. So I have those out to use next which scares the life out of me because I haven't used them very much. So this ought to be good. Hi there, Kathy. Welcome, welcome. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm just going to pop that aside for the second and I'm going to grab my scissors and cut off this excess... Oh, cut off this excess paper so that I have got a surface that I know what to do with. Now the background piece, this stuff in the background, uh, my desk space, is a puppy training pad. So I've mentioned before that I use these all the time for my live Facebooks because, or for all of my, or for all of my wet projects actually, not just my live Facebooks, but they catch any wet overspray and that mops it up really quickly because they are designed to catch puppy wees. Puppy piddle. So um, they are not a hospital um, item as some people have seen them as. but you could use those if you have one of those at home handy. No judgment here. Right, so let's start building some background here. Let's start building a bit of a back, a bit of a, I don't know, something. So she's given me a number stencil and also the brick wall stencil. But before I put this down, because I'm going to use gloss sprays, I might just use a very small amount of gesso just to, oh, where'd that water come from? Um, just to even it out a bit so that I have got a similar sort of surface all the way around. There goes my brush on the floor. So I'm just going to use a little bit of gesso and I'm going to use my paint lid as a palette and just go over the top very, very lightly to make sure, do I use, ha, huh, um, yes, I have Kmart is where I get my puppy pads from because the ones at cheap shops I have found are too, uh, they fall apart too quickly as soon as they get a bit of water on them um, and they can bunch up. So I use the ones from Kmart, Julie, and you can buy them in a 20 pack for not very many dollars because Kmart's good like that. So I'm not covering up my background, um, but I'm just adding a little bit of white over it and I'm taking away the shiny where the gel medium may have dried, okay? And it's again, it's a dry brush technique, which means it's going to dry a lot quicker and not make a horrible big mess. All right, done, done, done. 
Okay, so let's look at this next situation here. This stencil. Um, so Dina Wakely gloss sprays are a great product and they are, are an acrylic paint. I'm going to do, so how about I do something a bit more masculine? I do a brown, yellow, blue, grey sort of finish. Um, shaking, shaking. Hmm. Making it work, Louise. Making it work. Challenge is looking good. So I have to give them a really, really, really good shake before I start because the good stuff is settled at the bottom. Shake with the lids on. Oh, the good stuff on this one's really settled because, oh, there's the ball. Got to get the ball moving. Move those balls around, girls. Sorry. It's been a long weekend. Sorry, not sorry. Is that right? So the other thing about the Dina Wakely sprays is you can layer them. So I'm going to get some light colour on the bottom to start with. Make sure that this bit here has been unblocked. Now I prepared a pin in here. I'm glad I can make a couple of you smile today with my bad sense of humour. Alright, just commit to it, right? Get it on there. Oh, come on, you wretched thing. So it is not just you that has that problem if they unclog. Um, we may end up going to acrylic paint yet. Or I'm just going to change my mind and have a tantrum and go for another colour. But I haven't used these this year, which means that... Oh, God, that was lucky. The whole lid almost came undone. Which means they have got some blocking issues. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we're going to be going for... Oh, that one sprayed. Shit, biz. Okay. See? It's me doing things spontaneously. And... Oh, you know what? Let's commit to that, hey? Let's give that a bit more of a shake. And now I'm going to grab my brayer and get it on there. So it's grabbing the tissue paper. It's showing up where my gesso was. And now I'm using my dirty brayer and going in off that side. So now I'm committing to that grungy, grungy feel. I don't want my face here to be um painty painty so i'm going to cover that up with some paper towel welcome to those of you who <laughs> have just started watching um yes i am a professional but it doesn't look like it today and that is okay because what I'm doing is I've been issued a challenge to play with certain tools and I am just winging it. I'm having a bit of a play. I'm seeing what can happen bad on um, how things can go bad live on Facebook. No, it's not that bad. Um, but see what's happening with the brayer. It's really thinning it out quite nicely and it's creating this really interesting texture. Ha. Okay, thank you for all of your comments. All right, there we go. Let's pull that off, pull that off. And I've started to lay down a bit of a, a, a grungy foundation here for my page. So that's using the Medieval Gloss Spray. Right, let's see what else we can add to it. Let's try a bit of marine here because I think that if it works... chances of it working guys 
You watch, I will make this work. It will come back from the dead, I promise you. Oh, I'm gonna swear publicly in a minute. Okay, let's abandon the idea of the gloss spray so I don't lose my marbles live on Facebook. Let's go for plan B. So plan B is I've got my acrylic paints next to me. And I am going to use a few colours. What colours did I say before? Let's go with something a little bit earthy. So I've got buff. And I'll use my fingers and palette knife to get some colour on and start building up a few lovely layers. A few lovely layers of colour in and around my grungy skull person. So the buff is exactly that. It's just a really nice tone of beige that can work really, really quite nicely. And I'm using the back part of my palette knife to stick that all down with. What's going on here? What happened? Bloody hell. It's like a train wreck. Can't take your eyes off it though, can you guys? Cheddar. Cheddar and navy. There's two colours that I love together. So let's go with that. Um, what I want to do now is... What are you doing over there, Louise? Dropping hooks. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to use a baby Just wipe. Just having my own train wreck. Just having her own little train wreck over there. Because this is still a little wet, what can happen with this stencil, and I've got that gessoed background, is the stencil and the baby wipe are taking off a little bit of paint. Oh, Robin, you nailed it, babe. Robin's just said, I need a gin. <laughs> so I've done 12 live Facebooks in creating Facebooks in, in four days. And I'm pretty impressed that this is the only one so far that I've, I've that's almost gone south, okay? But I'm not going to jinx it because it hasn't totally gone south yet. Um, all right. scary colour. I wonder if I, am I playing with fire to, you know, just, let's get rid of all of those gloss sprays because let's be honest, it's not going to go well if I keep them out. Hey Louise, could you shut that glass door so we don't all need to listen to my husband having a conversation with Jess, please? Okay, so see what the brayer is doing? The brayer is thinning out the paint and spreading it really quite nicely. Um, Julie, what, are you said? what have you said there? You're supposed to be food shopping, but you can't take the eyes off my train wreck. Okay, fair call. How can you be, are you watching me in Woolworths? What aisle are you in, love? Or are you internet shopping? Because I'm suitably impressed. I just sent Trevor to the supermarket because I haven't left the house in, I don't even know when the last time I left the house was. Last Wednesday sometime. Ooh, this is working out. You're in the car. <laughs> Go and beep the horn for us, love. Give us a beep. Better not be hands. Better be hands free. Better be hands. You're not driving, are you? Um, okay. So this colour that I've put on now is night. So night wouldn't normally blue wouldn't normally go with orange but i find that night is really quite nice with um when you use it with a brayer and lightly <laughs> over the top uh, that's super funny um okay so in a second i'm going to add that brick wall um stencil again and you can see that it's getting a really grungy sort of feel it's a little deep and dark 
You're getting married in 12 days, Jess. Well, that's impressive, love. Congratulations. I'm too old to know people who are getting married. Oh, well, not really, but, you know, my daughter's certainly not getting married yet. All right. So, we're quite dark. I just want to take a little bit of um, dampness out of it with the... Because the paper is quite thin, it's soaked up the, pa uh, the paint nicely. My, I'm just reading out the messages here, uh, comments. Leslie's just said, my whole family were watching you last night on the TV while we were having dinner. Oh my goodness. Are you joking, Leslie? <laughs> my family don't even like to spend that much time with me. I'm impressed that yours did, though. And I hope you apologised uh, to them for me because that's a lot. All right, so I want to add some brick walls now. What colour brick walls? Medieval, which is the one colour I don't have here next to me. So let's go with a combination of cheddar and, okay. I'm going to take this out because I want to mix colours on my palette underneath. And since I've ditched the idea of the sprays and um, that's just all gone terrible, I'm going to use my sponge some paint um Louise down in the bottom drawer of the trolley down there and I'm really sorry that I'm big making one. big one yep. on your right in that tub you will find a medieval Dina Wakely paints. Yeah, in that container there. I don't want to play with those sprays because I have to unblock them all. So how do you unblock sprays? I will soak those in hot water. Am I free this Friday night? Want to come and play? Oh, um, Nairi, I am teaching a class on Friday night here in the studio. So I would love to come and play at your place on Friday night, but my second art journal class on is at exactly the same time. But thank you very much for the offer. All right, so this medieval paint is gonna put a really nice, subtle sheen over the top. And I've mixed it with a little bit of night. Oh, okay, well, I'll, well if you don't mean me, then that's fine. <laughs> I can accept that. Take those far, far away from me before I knock the bloody things off my counter. You're not gonna get it on your fingers, I promise. All right, so the medieval is just gonna put that nice layering <laughs> over the top with a little bit of this navy. And I've created a bit of a brick wall background. So when I go around the face here, I'm just being aware. So the medieval Dina Wakely paint is a metallic, which means that it's going to sit a little differently on top of the paint. And all of the other paints react a little differently with it as well because it is not a solid color. So I'm just pushing up against there and now that is looking better. Although Louise begs to differ because I can read her mind. She's doing this whole, hmm, where are you going with this thing? So, would you like to pop that in some water for me, please? Thank you. Since you're standing there looking useful, 
Okay, so that's almost dry. And now I'm going to grab this stencil and I'm going to get a little bit of black. Shall we go black? Shall we go bold and black? Yeah, why not? How bad can it go, right? Well, we, we know that because we just saw it earlier. Um, oh, that's a lot of black. Oh, Louise, look, there's 68 people watching me flounder through this. This is wonderful, having one of those days. All right, so I'm actually going to put a bit of blue with this as well. So the idea being is we're building up lots and lots and lots of different layers. I could add some stamped elements to it as well. Um, why don't I get this on first? So what I'm thinking with this, there's a couple of different ways. I could stencil around it. Um, because it is a mask, not a stamp, I can use it as a stamp if I was to put paint on the back and then stamp, but I'd have to be super quick so that it would, wouldn't, um, the paint wouldn't dry. Um, but I'd like to try that, so why don't I give it a go? So how would I do that? What would be the process? Um, I'm going to spread the paint out onto my mat here. And I, I'm not after a perfect print by any means. I know that I'm going to get black all over my hands and everywhere else. But what I want to do is I want to get paint on the back of my mask like that. And then I'm quickly going to do that and then do that. Oh, so what's happening is when I peel it off, I've now used it and I've got that nice little stamped element going on there. And I actually quite like that. So I'm going to repeat the process with the black again. Did I just put black all over my face? <laughs> I just scratched my nose because that's that'll happen. All right, so I do the same thing. I'm going to offset it here. Push it down. Like that. I need to put it up there for at the top for balance. So I'm just going to drag it through the paint on my craft mat. Like that, and then it's probably off camera, but you're gonna get the picture. And we are done. You're gonna have to get your hands dirty, Louise. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, that's super funny. Okay, clean up some of this paint off the side here so I don't put my elbow in it because that's a thing. All right. Okay, guys, I'm after some feedback now. What else can I add to my background? Love a challenge. Good one, Louise. Yeah. Thanks, Alison. Whose side are you on? Um, anyone else got any suggestions on what else I can add to my background? What should we see? Have I got any cog stamps, I wonder? I think I do need a gin. Who suggested that? Am I gonna paint those roses? Yes, I am. My pop of color is gonna be here. My background here, oh, white text stamping. Oh no. Splatters or drips? Oh, okay, we can do drips. And I can do drips with the um, Dina Wakely gloss sprays, actually, now that Lou's put them away. What the heck happened down there? Oh, okay. Um, 
So in saying that, um, somebody else, I think Robin just suggested about the popping some drips on. So I'm going to use some cheddar and some night. And I'm going to add some drips and some splatter. Is there a, did I open a white one, Louise? Is there a white one in there? No. no. Okay. Maybe I thought about it. So what I'm going to do this time, wording to look like graffiti. Oh, that could work. Okay. So I've undone the lid of my gloss spray and I'm going to use a paintbrush. Um, I'm going to use the gloss sprays and I'm going to do a little, a little wall drip. And I can be a little, I can give it a little guidance. But because it's acrylic paint, it's going to dry really nicely. Okay. Oh, that made a massive difference just doing that. It's all of a sudden I've noticed on this side that it's made that cheddar on this side show up more. And then I need to dry this off though. Otherwise it's going to end up being everywhere. Um, and then I might pop a little over here. And we put the lid on that straight away. After the afternoon I'm having, let's be honest, that could have gone worse. So my heat tool's not only drying it, but it's also just pushing the color around. So I'm being really aware of how it's flowing and where that color's going before I add my blue. And I will just do a few little splatters of this navy and then I'm going to colour the face, give it a title, and then I'm going to call it. Okay, we're not using that colour. Oh, hang on. Guys. Mm -hmm. So just giving a little bit of a splatter with night. And I'm covering up the face because I've already put enough mess on that, which I'm now going to try and cover up. All right. Oh, missed a bit. Yeah, the spiders make a bit of a difference, don't they? Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to add colour to this. So from that I can choose any sort of medium. It doesn't really matter what I use. So I could use scribble sticks, I could use watercolours, but I think I might use the scribble sticks. So I'm just going to grab those. And because scribble sticks are acrylic paint, I'm keeping that theme going across and... Dun, dun, dun. and using I'll use those for this purpose all right uh, so scribble sticks I need to do a nice big juicy red rose up the top here and I'm going to start with that very rarely do I go straight onto here I always do a little paste a little a little sample on here to make sure I get the right color first so I've got Sedona and Ruby so scribble sticks are an acrylic paint in a crayon form. They are not crayons. They have no wax in them at all. Okay, so where you might think that, yeah, they're crayons, they'll be great. Well, they're not. They are not. So now I've got these little puddles of acrylic paint. So scribble sticks are awesome for traveling with as well. 
because they you can take twice the amount of colors with you and then work with um, then you've got like a, a nice amount of paint all right so now I have got that black bit over the top there so I'm gonna have to commit to putting some scribbly wording across there later So I added the um, the yellow, well actually it wasn't yellow, it was cheddar. So I've, I'm bringing in a bit of that colour from that side. And I've got another rose down here. So with the scribble sticks, you can also take the colour straight off the, the scribble stick as well. Um, we quite often do this in class. Take the colour straight off. Now... You'll see that it bloomed and reacted really differently there. That's because obviously I didn't have enough gel medium sitting on top. So it soaked right on in to that rose. So I just need to be super aware now of where I put my water so that I don't bleed too much up into the face. But that is what the gel medium does. It's cleared that... Uh, sorry, it's um, not cleared. It has soaked in where it should have protected it. So has that got, only got two roses? Yes. Okay, so let's get some green on there now where the leaves are. So I've got um, lime and evergreen is here as well. God, don't you love how far black paint strip goes? It stretches everywhere. Gosh, okay. So green, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Put a little bit on here. And keep my, my, um, my scribble sticks out there to make sure that I get... If I need to pull them off the marker... I must be tired. I think that's definitely it. So until um, about 10 p.m. this evening, you can get 15% off of Scrap FX products and chipboard online. If you want to go back and watch the other live Facebooks that I have done today, earlier today I did... A, at around lunchtime I did a live Facebook all talking about tools and different tools that you can use in your crafting the ones that I use the most uh, and whatnot and then uh, what did I do this morning I did the door I did a chipboard door this morning so you'll be able to like a mixed media project so you'll be able to jump on and have a look and go back and watch that and if you have got the time and you want to have a look uh, over the last couple of days there has been other Facebooks as well including a I did a scrapbook page using AB Studios a couple of days ago when was that that could have been yesterday it's been a it's been a big couple of days um, so there was that. I've done a whole heap of cards. Um, a tag. Oh, I've done a couple of art journal pages. So last night, or oh, 4.30 yesterday afternoon, I did a scrap, or an art journal page using stencils and the new Lindy's colours. So you'll be able to find that if you scroll back through my Facebook all right, so you can see now that pop of colour. And I want to add a little bit of this orange, this cheddar, to those uh, yellow circles because those yellow circles are, circles are a lot more stark than I would have liked. So I'm just going to give them a little dimension with that cheddar. And again, like I, like I said, this is acrylic paint. It is not a crayon. Have I missed one? 
No. And that works for me. All right, so on the face here, I've got this little goober and I need to turn it into something. So I'm going to find a stamp and I'm going to give my skull a face tattoo. And I've got a couple of Here we go. That'll work. I've got a little stamp here that says, don't judge me. Kind of fitting, isn't it? Oh, I forgot to put my man on. Oh, I'm having an idea. Okay, let me do this quickly and then I will. <laughs> Did you see? <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so I want to put. So just a little bit of layering over the top. Kind of takes the focus away, but I need to put it somewhere else as well for balance. And like I said, that one says, don't judge me. Fitting. Fitting. Kind of sums up my day, really. But you know what? I'm okay with that. All right. So what do I do with this guy? I'm going to do something a little bit different, and I want him half hanging off my page like that. Because if he goes there, then he's got this big orange goober down the middle of his body. And if I put him there, he doesn't really fit. If I put him there, he doesn't really fit. So I thought maybe he could go like that. So I'm going to stick him to something else. How am I going for time? Oh, it's great. I've got nowhere else to be. It's not a problem. Um, thank you. I don't know what I'm going to stick it on, though. So let me think this through. The only thing I have handy is some cardstock. Um, behind those blue stamps there, Lou, is a book. Excellent. Perfect, thank you very much. I'm gonna grab a page out of my dictionary and thesaurus. And I will choose a Look me overthinking. <laughs> For God's sake, Natalie, just pick a word out. Pick a page out. Pick a page and tear it. S. Done. Yes, we're going for S. Excellent. S it is. So I'm going to stick him on there and I'm going to give him a little bit of a gesso background first so that it is not super wordy. Um, and I'm going to do that with my finger. So a bit of feedback, guys. Just wondering, have you all done things as part of the greatest great international craft show this weekend? Have you all been involved in classes or joined the classroom? Um, or are you just hanging around me because you love me? I mean, that's a given, but you know what I mean. Um, what do you think? Did you find out about me and my event, my sale through the craft show? Or how did you find out about what's going on here? Um, I would love to hear. Watching and shopping. Oh, Jerry's back. You love the work. Thanks, Leslie. We love you too, darling. Um... Yeah, so I'm just kind of curious as to how people found out about... Just been hanging around, Jen. Just been hanging around, and I'm okay with that. I'm just going to grab my scribble stick now and put a little on here. A little bit of colour. That's a little bit blue than I anticipated. All right, so you can see what I'm trying to do. Add a little bit of... To take the starkness out of this. So when I put my man over the top, 
he's not going to stand out too much and he's going to blend in a little with the background. Ah, oh, welcome, Susan. I feel the need to apologise. I'm usually not such a train wreck. But like I said, this is number 12 live face... No, 16th live Facebook. Yes, I will upload them, Lorraine. Um, my 16th live Facebook in... Four days. In four days. Um, so, you know, I can't be expected to nail it every single time. <laughs> um but I'm all about education and showing you new things. So um, it's it's great to hear that where you know that you guys are coming from reading my emails or reading my information about the show and getting reminders. Um <laughs> and it is nice to be back too, Annette. I am enjoying being back doing the shows and really loving them. And I think that uh, giving you guys something for nothing every now and again when you support me so much is, is really, really good. I am going to cut around him now. Um, and I, like I said, I love doing them. It is a little tiring. I don't know how I did them before without Louise. We were talking about that this morning, how I was doing the live Facebooks and packing orders. I know what was happening, Lou. I know how I was doing it with wine and no sleep. Um, okay, I'm just going to cut around here. This may not work, but since you told me I kind of needed to use it, I think it might ruin the page, but I'm going to give it a whirl. Um, the, the, the idea of the shows, of course, is because we can't, the, like the online shows is because we can't be at the shows, um, and coming from South Australia, I've had a few people, <laughs> I've had a few people ask me if I'm going to the Gold Coast and going to Shepparton to do the live in-person shows. Um, let me just briefly give you the, the rundown as to why uh, we have chosen to not do that in 2021. We down here in South Australia, um, we have had hard border lockdowns to other states, as you all know. With the going to shows, which are mostly in rural, how do I say that rural? Rural. Rural. Oh, gosh, I sound like a 10 year old. Um, when they're in country Western Australia, oh, sorry, country Queensland or Victoria or something like that, um, and if you have a, a border shutdown, I've got 50 to 80% of my stock in transit on the way to one of these shows, means I can't sell it to you online, which means I, oh, there we go, which means I need to have extra stock here, which is an incredibly large um, of course, found that financial outlay. Um, and then if all of a sudden the borders get locked down again and we are stuck. stuck somewhere with no stock or I've sent all of my wonderful craft supplies to Queensland ready to go, then we can't get home or they're stuck tra in transit because the world has closed down again. I figure I can reach more people here with you guys hanging out and that this is just as fun and I don't have to wear pants. <laughs> so that is our plan for 2021. I'm not planning on doing any in live show and in person shows at this stage for that reason. Um, but I do appreciate all your support with your with your um, purchasing online. And I also appreciate the support of all of you who have chosen to do one of the paid online art journal classes as well. So for those of you who don't know, you can go back and do a class with me on Facebook. Um, you purchase the class online, nataliemay.com.au. And you will be able to jump online and go and do that. I add you to a private group. And then you can watch the videos back at your own speed. The class that I'm teaching next weekend 
What happened here? Bloody hell. The class I'm teaching next weekend, which is the steampunk sold out. class, has sold out um, at this point until I get some more paper in from the um, Stamperia paper. Because the paper, you get some bits and pieces included in your kit. Okay, so that is what the plan is with that. So you can see what I'm doing here. That drip went sideways, which doesn't work for anyone. So I need to get that drip no longer going sideways. And I'll dry that off and connect my title to it. All right, so I'm on the right track. Things are happening. Oh gosh, I'm determined to make this bloody spray work. It's not gonna. Hey, could you pass could you pass me that medieval spray again out of that there for me, please, Lou? Because I'm gonna insist on it working. Alright, so this is just really stark and I just want to do a little bit of that. Hone him down. I nailed that. Hang on, another bit of paper towel. Oh. And I can just tap it. Yes, better. Right. Need some scribble, need some words, needs to make it look like I drew this image. And the way that we do that is with a black pen of your choice and you go over some of the key areas. Okay, so that helps tie it all together. Uh, you, I mean, because essentially that's what you want out of an art journal is you want art that you have created. So the more I draw over the top, for example, and add my own little black lines, makes it look like I have drawn that image because that's what we want to do. Learning new things and new skills, it's even if you don't like it. So this turned out as a bit of a hot mess, but that's okay because I'm kind of liking where it has, has ended up. Um, I'm going to do some acemic writing at the top here, which is just a little bit of scribble and help tying it all. Um, it's, it's kind of like graffiti, but it's a bit more scribbly, a bit more how you going, a bit more cash. And it's kind of coming together quite nicely. So as for a title, because all art journal pages need some sort of title, some sort of scribbly wording, some sort of meaning behind it. I'm going to, I should use the words of something, but I want to use something like how he's watching you or something like that. And I'm going to put those words across there. So um, that's going to work for me. So I'll do that off camera in a moment because I've taken up way too much of your afternoon. All right. I don't want to tilt this too much because I've already tried to... If I tilt it back that way. All right, so this is where we are at. I've kind of semi-saved it. That, not so much. That, yeah, that not that's not bad. So... We have used a page out of my art journal and I have, we've, we've kind of gone with a grungy background um, unintentionally to start with because it was going to be a page using the Dina Wakeley gloss sprays and then everything went sideways. But what I did do is decided to make the best of it and we switched to paint we used a brayer we used all sorts of really cool tools um, I've just got my Stabilo pencil and I'm just going to get some marks on here because this guy's floating and that bugs me he can't be floating on anything he needs to be grounded um, so we had a bit of a play with that 
we got the colour on with the brayer. We used the brick wall stencil from Scrap FX. We used the word mask as a stamp, which is something that probably most people wouldn't normally do. They would use it more as a stencil. Um, we used... What else did we use, guys? We used, oh, the, the collage paper in the background. That's where this skull has come from. Um, I might be able to cover up that pink blob with a white pencil. I can take the focus away and tone it back a little bit on that little goober. There's a little bit of stamping in there. Um... all sorts going on so what happens today is that Louise and I are going to sit down in a minute and have a well-earned glass of wine <laughs> your orders over the next few hours will come in and uh, we will collate them all together and then tomorrow we will go through and have a bit of a look and um, start putting everybody's orders together and get them all posted out. Um, I have, uh, if you have forgotten to pay postage, I will be sending you a postage invoice. If your order has exceeded three kilograms, I will be sending you a postage invoice um, because of course we talked about having that limit of three kilos with the no judgment postage. Um, for those of you who haven't ordered before, you can order as many times as you like between now and 10 p.m. And you only need to pay postage one time. And then after that, we will um, you select no judgment at the checkout and we when we go from there. So there's plenty of different things online. Lots of opportunity for you to um, still have a bit of a look around tonight and take advantage of the 15% off. Take advantage of the pre-love section. Take advantage of the 30% off paper section. That's also um, still available. Uh, and keep an eye out for some new things coming in this week. Um, I Hopefully by the end of the week, I uh, might pop back on and tell you some other awesome things that are happening and show you some new tools and bits and pieces. Um, some new, new arrivals. Um, so... Yeah, guys, thank you so very much for your support this weekend. I really do appreciate it. It's been really fun. And I will take a photo of this catastrophe page here, which is not looking too bad. I just might tweak it a little bit and add a title. Um, and then I will post a picture online and link it to the products that I have used. So thanks again, everyone. And I look forward to chatting with you all soon.